Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books and my name is Drake. Every single super team has to have their dim-witted comic relief character, and for the Runaways, this responsibility falls onto a kid named Chase Stein. But there has to be more to him than just that, right? I mean, he's lasted from the original incarnation of the team all the way now into the modern era, and he is one of the team's most iconic characters. So let's take a look back at his history and origins and find out for ourselves. Chase Stein is the son of a couple of mad scientists, but he had more aptitude for sports instead of academics, and they resented it. Like how when Chase won a Little League MVP trophy, his mom drove by a pier so that he could throw it into the ocean, since she would only allow him to keep awards for things that mattered. When he was 16, Chase asked for a solid white van for his birthday, since it'd be inconspicuous on the road. But pretty soon after, he accidentally ran over his uncle, who was possibly trying to get in on the criminal dealings of his parents. Oh, did I forget to mention that the Steins are literal supervillains? Yeah, they're part of a group called the Pride. And alongside the rest of the group's children, Chase stumbled across them murdering a young girl. This prompts the kids to run away, and thus form the Runaways. Super clever name, I know. In an attempt to learn more about their parents' evil organization, the Runaways invade the Pride's private workspaces, and learned that each of the kids were something special in the process. Now, Chase didn't get any cool alien or magical powers like some of the kids, but when breaking into his parents' workshop, he obtained a pair of X-ray goggles and some powerful fire gauntlets called the Fistigons. Without a place to stay, Chase volunteered his secret hideout to the team a collapsed house inside of a cave that he'd slink off to whenever he needed some space. To help make the cave a little more secure, Stein bought a gamma testing sign for the outside off of eBay, which did a surprisingly great job of keeping people away. So now that they were on their own, the Runaways decided to abandon their names and instead take up new code names. Chase, being the unoriginal dumbass that he is, wanted to be called Neo. Like, from the Matrix. That was shot down, and he was given the name Talkback instead, but that didn't stick. Like, at all. If we're going to be totally honest, Chase didn't do too much during the first Runaway series, only really serving as a dude-bro comic relief character and to provide sexual tension with the girls in the group. This all came to a head when the Runaways finally confronted the Pride, and Chase nearly drowned. Thankfully, one of his teammates, a girl named Gertrude who has a psychic connection to a dinosaur named Old Lace, managed to save his life, and the two became a couple pretty much instantly afterwards. So it turns out that the Pride was working for some evil god-like things that ended up turning on them. And to escape their wrath, Chase hijacked an all-terrain vessel called the Leapfrog and basically became the team pilot from then on forward. The Runaways ended up adding a kid named Victor Mancha to the team after a future version of Gert comes back to the past and warns them that Victor will turn into a serious villain. But thankfully, by taking Victor in, the Runaways seem to have prevented this from happening at all. Chase gets pretty jealous about Victor basically being the perfect guy, but the two eventually bury the hatchet and become solid bros. Sadly though, not everything is all friendship and sunshine, because a new incarnation of the Pride rose up and managed to straight up kill Gert right in front of Chase's eyes. Before passing though, Gertrude passes on her psychic connection to Old Lace onto Stein, and he goes a bit insane during the grieving process. Chase was constantly on edge, and started distancing himself from the Runaways. In fact, he was going to straight up sacrifice himself to the evil gods that his parents were working for in an attempt to have them bring Gert back to life in exchange, but the team would not let him. Fast forward a bit further, and the Runaways are starting to have financial issues, as they've used up a lot of their remaining resources that their parents had hidden away that weren't already seized by the government. Chase was the only legal adult on the team, so he was given the task of finding a job. Stein ended up working as a PA for a radio host named Val Ryman, who would later go on to unleash a horde of radio zombies on Los Angeles. Because comics. Pretty soon after defeating the zombies, though, the Runaways hideout was destroyed by an unmanned drone, which seemingly killed off Old Lace in the process. This threw Chase into another spiral of depression, 
as the dinosaur was the last link to Gertrude that he had left. And this got taken out on Chase's uncle, who turns out survived being hit by Chase's van all those years ago. Sadly though, the book got pretty abruptly cancelled, and ended on a major cliffhanger, with Stein getting randomly hit by a car. But thankfully he made an off-panel recovery when the Runaways came back for some small cameos and crossovers. The biggest of these was when Chase sensed that Old Lace was alive, so the Runaways ended up teaming with the kids from Avengers Academy in order to save her. Speaking of, Chase and Nico ended up joining several members of the Academy when they were all kidnapped and brought to Murder World, a sick reality TV-esque game run by the villain Arcade. For a solid portion of the book though, Chase and Nico mostly served as background characters, until they joined the Avengers Academy students properly for an alliance. That is, until Chase was framed for attacking one of them. Needless to say, tensions were high so Stein took a walk in order to clear his mind. This was when he found the power armor of one of Murder World's first victims, Darkhawk. Things came to a tipping point, though, when all of the remaining survivors formed one giant alliance against Katie, a Tecromancer who rose up as the villain out of all of the contestants. Chase thought the simple solution was to just kill Katie, thus saving the most lives. But the problem, though, is that Katie actually shares a body with her innocent twin brother, so killing her would condemn an innocent. This mindset of kill or be killed ultimately got Chase kicked out of the group, but Katie instantly used her powers to take over the Darkhawk armor and was able to use Chase like a puppet. If that wasn't bad enough, Katie also used Chase to literally kill Nico. But don't worry, she came back to life pretty soon after, and they all take Katie down. Arcade, on the other hand, was defeated off screen, and the remaining survivors were rescued, including Darkhawk, who was apparently not dead this whole time. The survivors make a pact to not talk about what happened on Murder World to everyone, Chase returned the Darkhawk armor, and everything was great, until Arcade released the Murder World footage onto YouTube. With the events of Murder World becoming public knowledge, Chase broke the Pact of Silence and used it as an opportunity to achieve personal fame by going on talk shows and even signing a book deal. However, Stein and the other survivors were roped into getting revenge on Arcade, seemingly killing him in the process. This got them into a lot of trouble, so they decided to infiltrate an evil organization called the Masters of Evil as a means of bringing them down from the inside hoping that by doing this good deed, their names would be cleared. The Murder World survivors worked with the Masters of Evil for about three months before managing to actually achieve their goal of taking them down from the inside. But that was the last that we had seen of Chase for quite a while. It wasn't until the Runaway series was brought back in 2017 that we found out that the Runaways had gone their separate ways, and that Chase was working on trying to bring Gert back to life. The plan coalesced into going back in time and rescuing Gertrude as soon as she was being stabbed, busting into Nico's apartment, and getting her medical attention straight away. This actually ended up working, but Gertrude was stranded out of time. All of her friends were scattered, she missed so much history, she had no life left to go to, and Chase was a grown man, but she was still just a teenager. As of right now, everything is uncertain. Will the Runaways continue to stand divided, or will they come back together? Only time will tell. It has been awesome seeing Chase grow from this annoying dude bro character to the heart and soul of the entire team, and I really like seeing this character development because for Chase especially, this has been a literal coming of age story and he has become one of my favorite characters in the entire Runaway series. But hey, if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? In fact, I have an entire playlist of all my Runaways videos, so if you like this one, then you're probably gonna like all of those, so why not give them a watch? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully I'll see you next time.